Hi everybody, this is Ot Samurai. Today I'm going to be reacting to Dungeon Meshi, episode 19. <clears throat> so last time we had the our party just trying to figure out what the deal is with the dark magician and just what are his motives and how did he uh, come to be the way that he is and if, you know, in the way that they were trying to figure this out, they were like, maybe we can use some of this to uh, reason with him and talk with him instead of fight him. But I think it's gonna have to be a, a combination of both, a fight and a, and a conversation. I don't think it's gonna be either, either or. But yeah, um, it seemed like uh, Marcel had some useful info, but there's nothing concrete, obviously, because it's all, <clears throat> from what we know, either from very old textbook stuff or just, uh, mm, let's call it a logical deduction from what they've seen and what they know from the basic stuff of the dungeon. And then the rest of the episode was mostly uh, just Lias trying to figure out who the imposter is because they were dealing with a monster. I don't remember the name of it, but it basically that makes copies of people but the the fun thing is that it actually makes copies i would make it would make sense that it only makes copies of you know when there's more than one person because it does it by copying the image that a person has of another person so for example of chill chuck uh, there would be three more of him because, you know, there's the image that Marcel has of him, then Laios, and then Senshi, and so on with the other ones as well. And the, the Laios ones were pretty easy to <laughs> to see which ones were the fake ones. And then the rest, it was little by little. But honestly, I think the Senshi ones were also fairly easy. And uh, also, well, chill choke, I was kind of like 50-50. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I think I got it right. And then Marcel, Marcel, I think I, I also had it right, but I don't think I said it. And I liked how uh, Lyos got the right answer by basically using all his knowledge about monsters, but also using the knowledge that he has about his friends and how they react to mon monsters. And he just went full on dog mode <laughs> against a monster. Well, tried to anyway, but Marcel just got rid of it herself. And then we ended off on a girl uh, about to attack Marcel. So I'm guessing she's one of the ones that was with Shudo? But other than that, I have no idea what what's up with her. So yeah, with that, let's get started in 5, 4, uh, 3, 2, 1, go! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay, here we go. Why is she so aggressive? Damn. Okay, okay, we will, we will. Ah! I knew it. Mm hmm? Huh? Huh? Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what Fallen was. No, that's what she's asking. He's not a... whatever. No, of course, Senshi would try to feed someone who's holding Marcel hostage. But we don't have anything else. No. Sure. Senshi. I mean, we have no idea what age she could be. I mean, she's basically a cat. No. Oh, so it's not because she's a businessman? Ah. You did not just waste food. I'm gonna smack you. Yeah, actually. Even Marcel, who was hesitant at first, has always eaten everything. <laughs> no, since he does not care when it comes to food. <laughs> he, he does not care. He will risk his life. Whoa. What the hell is that? <laughs> oh my god. 
Don't worry, Lyos got, got it. Huh? Paper? <laughs> I... Senshu's... <laughs> mindset... It's great. <laughs> You disrespect food, you get these hands. But you didn't have to be such a dick about it. You could have just, you know, tried asking. Oh, yeah. No point in denying it. Why is she blushing over that? Uh, I mean, it's not a guarantee that it's going to work. We're going after the magician and make him turn falling back the way she was. This is interesting to learn, though. Mm -hmm. I don't think he will, but maybe I'm putting too much faith in him. A glimpse of hope of what they might be able to do with falling. I like this. It's to me. Yeah. Yeah, please teach her some manners. Oh, 
this feels like just like the OP. His parents. Oh. Wow. So these are all of life's biggest insecurities. He's probably dreaming. Yeah, man, the back's under her eyes. Yeah, she's just definitely really exhausted. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oh, so it's a monster? Oh, so... Yeah, okay, I get it. That was fast. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good thing that he realized pretty quickly. Whoa, whoa, this is fun. Like, have you ever had this? <laughs> like, having a lucid dream? Like, you realize you're in a, in a dream so you can do whatever the hell you want? I had one recently and it was pretty interesting. <laughs> Just telling her wasn't enough. Mm. Whoa. What are you doing getting scared? It's not real. Yeah. But actually, if, if it's a nightmare from a monster, 
Maybe something will happen if Laius gets killed. But that seems too simple. The way that Falling explained it seemed to be from like psychological trauma or stress. More. That was very, you know. Laius. But here it seems very. Just, you know, a regular phobia. Yeah. What? <laughs> oh no, this isn't getting better. I was just wondering that. Actually, Lyos was pretty lucky that he was... an adult in his dream. Or his nightmare. Fallen? Yeah. Okay, that makes more sense now. I... And she probably is, but... It's more so guilt. No. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, look at the paintings in the background. Oh, Marcel. Eh? Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that that makes more sense with what I, I was thinking. No. Oh. oh, I love this.
Whoa. Whoa. Her defending the monster blood collar. <laughs> that, that line of delivery was was funny. Oh, we woke her up. No! Okay. Tanoshi! Clearly, you don't remember. It was pretty stressful. Of course. Oh. Oh, that's awesome. Eh, that's how you remember it? Oh, she looks so cute. I'm sure that book is going to come up uh, at some point. But it's just it's going to come up. It's got it's going to be relevant <laughs> in the future. But man, I love 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 the way that we delved into uh Marcel's psyche in this episode. But I'll talk a little bit more after Oh, the ending is finished. <laughs> oh, isn't that her? <laughs> Man, I already forgot her name. So, so, I'll <laughs> I'll I'll remember it eventually. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. book that uh, the magician has is at the end of the the end of the ending okay yeah gotta keep that in mind <clears throat> but yeah uh, it wasn't really uh, you know we didn't really stay there much but I, I also it's also worth pointing out uh, the nightmare, or the nature of the nightmare that Laius had before he went into Marcel's. And yeah, it's uh, pretty sad to see that what Shudo was telling him and being quite mean about it like two episodes ago 
is most definitely Elias's biggest insecurities and fears. Though I do wonder if his parents are really like that. Which if, if they are, that's... Man, I do not like them. Uh, or if, you know... Or if this is just... Uh, you know, his nightmare just exaggerating things and bringing out uh, bad qualities that they have to an extreme degree or just straight up they don't have them. It's hard to say because we've never seen his parents before, I don't think. So, yeah, um, just something that uh, I was wondering. But regardless, it's, uh, yeah, I, I had a feeling that this was quite the sore spot for Lias, but this really uh, hits, like, brings, uh, how, do, how do we word this? <laughs> like, this really leaves no doubt how, how much it hurt Lias to hear all that from Shudo. And it's also probably because he had that argument with Shudo so recently that the nightmare was focused on that. But the way that uh, his parents in the nightmare were talking about it, it seems like he's had this, this insecurities about it for quite a long time. Man, you know, the, the more time passes, the more I pr appreciate Lyles as a character. But yeah, most of uh, the Nightmare stuff was focused on Marcel, which I do think it was uh, the better stuff, but I just, you know, I wanted to highlight that uh, the Lyles stuff was also pretty good. <clears throat> but yeah, Marcel, we... Uh, took a little bit to really figure out what exactly uh, her fears were because man <laughs> it's probably because you know the mangaka took more time to delve into her nightmare more with more time but there was a lot more to hers in regards to like visuals so it was a bit uh, harder to really figure out and there wasn't just a bunch of people <laughs> as, uh, Just spelling it out And just you know telling Marcel basically exactly what it is that she would least want to hear This was uh, a little bit abstract uh, But I think well, yes uh, She obviously has a fear of uh, people that she loves dying before her uh, I think it's more so, you know, I don't want to call it a savior complex because I don't think that's what it is, but it's uh, just, you know, she really puts a lot of responsibility in her shoulders about ha having to be the one to save them or to play a big uh, role in saving the people that she really, really cares about. So it's basically like, if they died before me, it's because I wasn't able to do enough to save them. That's how Marcel sees it. So I think, really, I think Laios only scratched the surface. Now, why specifically the monster in her nightmare uh, was able to age Laius? I don't know. Maybe it's just, you know, this, the simplest way of showing, you know, like, obviously, people age. You know, that's just in, in the inevitability of life. People will become old and just by that they will die and they will leave you behind. But I, I mean, and then that's sort of related to Marcel's fears, but that's not super 
exactly with what, uh, you know, with her bird and fallen. They definitely didn't die of natural causes. But there's definitely something to, you know, people uh, leaving her behind. Just being unable to keep running with her. And then the monster gets her, gets her loved ones. Maybe the monster just being a representation of death itself. Maybe. But I really, really like how, uh, uh, from a moment onwards, uh, Laya just, instead of just trying to see her, yo, this isn't real, <laughs> which I did think that was going to be enough at first. It was just, he instead went in the approach of like trying to uh, lift her up and basically tell her, now you are capable of so much stuff. You know, you're so strong, you, you know all this stuff, you're so knowledgeable, you can do this. She, uh, she, or rather Laios gave her the confidence uh, to beat this fear by herself. Like, yes, he needed to be there to uh, give her that push. But I really like that she was the one that stopped the monster. I don't know. There's definitely more uh, to be said about all what the dream says about about Marcel's trauma. Uh, but for now, that's <laughs> that's all I can really uh, analyze. That's that's the, the the extent of my brain. And then there was also a nice moment uh, between Laius and the cat girl, where like, you know, he just by looking at her, gets hope that maybe one day Fallen can be like her. Like I still have like maybe parts of a beast, but still be herself inside. That would probably be the best uh, outcome. So even though, yeah, there's no guarantee that they can bring Fallen back, and they're not trying to uh, fool themselves into thinking that it's possible, but they're still going to try anyways. Because that's just how much Fallen means to them. Or, you know, in case of like maybe Chill Chuck or Senshi, because Fallen means so much to those two, they will do it. But yeah, I, I, I don't really have many thoughts about uh, the cat girl. She just, like, this is her formal introduction. Uh, but hopefully she will be uh, a nice addition to the party. So yeah, this is this uh, this is my reaction to this episode of Dungeon Machine. So if you liked it, please like and subscribe. Until next time, see ya.